Yeah, gentlemen, it is a pleasure to be able to continue with my series of lectures. This is a second of a series of three. And today I shall be talking about more in detail. No. I have to. About the possibility of how to numerically simulate the buckling behavior of imperfect shells. Essentially, in my first lecture, I pointed out that if we have statistical inf information about the initial imperfections, and if we have computational capabilities to simulate the buckling of imperfect shells, then we can combine the two to derive reliability functions. I also pointed out that the accuracy of the derived reliability functions depends very heavily on the accuracy of your deterministic ways of calculating the buckling of imperfect shells. Now, we call our system DISDECO for Delft Interactive Shell Design Code. And it is a code that is intended for the analysis of buckling sensitive structures. Now, the first question that comes to your mind if you have been in this business why another computer code to do something that there are so many codes to do? Now, what is different on this deco, that it essentially doesn't consist of one program to calculate things. It is more a computer environment. It is a way to present the accumulated theoretical, numerical, and practical knowledge of, so say, last 50 years to the interested user. The user is sitting behind his workstation, and he can successively address programs of different sophistication. So this deco is actually a hierarchical code. And if you think of levels of hierarchy, you can do that of different ways. For instance, you can look at wall construction, different type of wall construction, or shell theory, or discretization. I have here, for instance, what do I mean by different type of wall constructions? Well, the simplest one is isotropic. You just take a sheet of metal, you wrap it around, and you have a cylindrical shell. And essentially, everywhere you have the same material properties. You can get orthotropic if you put external stringers on it. Then it has in one direction one stiffness property and another another. You can use one of the modern way of doing things out of composites. And then you have anisotropic, if the layup is such. You can do it with or without shear deformation included. And finally, there is also the sandwich way of construction. And there also you can have orthotropic phase sheets on anisotropic phase sheets. So you see a bunch of hierarchical levels here. You could also base your hierarchy on shell theory. Simplest one is the Donnell type, nonlinear shell equations. Then the other one, which is more complicated, is second level, let us say, Flüge, Novozhilov. One could add senders. All are more no, coiters. They are more or less the same type. And recently, people have been using shell theories where finite rotation is permitted. For instance, QSTEG, one of the computer codes of level three, uses such a shell theory. You could also base your hierarchy on the way that you discretize the governing partial differential equations. Shells are two-dimensional structures. They are described by partial differential equations. So for instance, the simplest way of discretizing is using a double Fourier series both in the x and y and using Galerkin's method. Thereby, you reduce the partial differential equations to, if you have an eigenvalue problem, to a matrix eigenvalue problem. If you have a response, response problem, to the solution of a set of nonlinear algebraic equations. These are modules that are included in this deco that can do that. Now, that is the simplest one. The next level is. What is the drawback of this, by the way? The drawback is that you cannot satisfy boundary conditions at the shell edges. You satisfy whatever the trigonometric function satisfies. Now, 
One knows that boundary conditions are important, so you might want to move to level two. You still keep a Fourier series in the y direction, because you know that you will get a number of waves there. You use Galerkin's method, and if you apply it, what you get is a set of nonlinear ordinary differential equations in x, which you can solve numerically. And then you can satisfy boundary conditions that you can choose at the two edges. Such codes are Anilisa, which is one that I shall describe in the third lecture more in detail. SRA is a code that was developed by Jerry Cohen. He has a newer one which he calls Phasor, NASA sponsored activity. And on the next slide, there is here another formulation which falls into the same class. You use a truncated Fourier series in the y direction, but you don't solve the resulting equations numerically. You formulate that problem in a finite difference energy formulation, and that is a famous Bosar family, Bosar 4, Bosar 5, are the most recent members of it from Dave Bushnell. Now, the third level, the highest level of hierarchy is where you assume that the discretization is numerical in both x and y direction. You can do it via finite difference energy formulation in two directions. That's the first member of the Stax family. Or you can do it in a two-dimensional finite element formulation, and that's a Q Stax. OK. Now, those are the different levels of hierarchy. What do you need to run such a system? You essentially need some system that you can envision as follows. You have at local level a graphic workstation. I, this is the environment that we have in Delft. <laughs> it is already a couple of years old. So in pl place of Sun 4 IPC Spark stations, we now use Spark Station 2s. Within a couple of months, we shall use, we shall use the Spark Station stands. At faculty level, we have a large file server. I have here noted Sun 4-280. We have in meanwhile a Spark server. And all these are connected in a computer network. The top of the line machine that we have at the university is a convex C3820. It will be upgraded to a C3840 in three months. That means it will be a top-of-the-line convex with four processors. There is a computer network to the computing center in Amsterdam where they have a Crave YMP with four processors. Essentially, this is a transparent setup. You sit behind your workstation, and you decide where you want to compute. You do all the pre- and post-processing on your graphic workstation the same way whether you do the computations here, here, there, or in Amsterdam. OK, what is the architecture of this deco? This deco is supposed to be transportable. It, it's supposed to be possible to install it in a SunSpark station, or a Silicon Graphics, or on a Mac, you name it. How do we do it? The whole thing is encased in an environment where the communication to the workstation or the communication to a database that you may be using is done via interfaces. So for instance, if <laughs> on, in place of a Sun Spark station, you do use a silicon graphics, all we have to do is replace the interface. All the rest of the modules that do the work sit on the workstation. And they are written in standard Fortran. What does, for, for instance, the generalized analysis module look like? No. <laughs> or the command processor. It has a driver. And essentially what it does, it checks whether the input for the particular module that you have selected is given in a correct form. It generates the necessary JCL cards. If it is a remote job, it sends it away. Whenever it comes back, it picks it up again for the post-processing.